is the Let's Talk Tribe Weekly Prospect Chat, recorded on May 11th, 2017. I am your host, Matt Lyons, and joining me as always for these mostly weekly endeavors is Let's Go Tribe lead prospect writer and prospect interviewing machine, Brian Heminger. Brian, what do we have today? In today's edition of the Prospect Chat, we have um, a lot of prospects getting promoted, we have prospects getting injured, and we have some red hot pitching prospects. So it should be a lot of fun. And of course, we'll be taking all of your questions. Of course, yeah. If you guys have any now, drop them in the comments now. Um, we'll just talk about some some things up front. But when we get through that, we'll talk about we'll take all your questions that we got. We got a couple on Twitter. We got a good a couple really good ones on Facebook. So, so I want to start with those pitching prospects, Brian. That Tristan McKenzie. Let's talk about yeah. him. Just incredible his start the other day. Yeah, he's not half bad. I mean, you know, 14 strikeouts in six innings. I yeah, mean, you know, ho-hum. I mean, yeah, <laughs> one hit, one walk. So so literally, let me, let me just try to factor this out. Okay, he faced 20 batters, struck out 14 of them. Eight, and out of the 18 outs, only four of his outs were not strikeouts. That's unbelievable. Oh, wow. <laughs> I didn't even think of it in those terms. Yeah. Do you have any idea what they he were? Walked no? The first batter he faced on five pitches. So after that, 14 of the next 19 he struck out. Wow. <laughs> yeah, he got some major props from Indians Twitter and Major League Baseball was talking about it. MILB was the front page story. It was it, he's a big deal. Yeah, for sure. Whew. It's good. it's a, just a general question at this point now, but you've sort of talked about it on the site and I know people want to know. So when do you think his double-A call-up is coming? I know the Indians want to be conservative with him, but he's kind of forcing their hand. <laughs> I mean, this kid's 19 years old. He's rail thin. He's he's six foot five, 165 pounds. Like, and like his teammates call him sticks. I mean, it's it's hilarious. And but and I know this is his first time pitching in a full season league. So they're trying to stretch him out. They're trying to be cautious with him. But he is too good for high A right now. So I'm guessing that what's going to happen is they'll let him stick around all the way through the double or the high A all-star game. Cause he's obviously going to make it right now. He's leading the whole Carolina league in strikeouts. And then after that, they'll probably promote him to double A. We were talking before the show. My selfish reason for wanting him is because of where I live, the Eck and rubber ducks, sometimes they get up here and play games. So, I know you want to be patient with him. He's just send him up. Let him do a couple road games. <laughs> let him play yeah, up here. Let him just, just let him play in AAA. Let him play the big into yeah. Mets. He needs to play up here. <laughs> they did some promotions this week, this past week. Like not just yeah, those. Just like a guy was injured, and let's just move a, you know, just an org player around. That's not like a major prospect. They they actually did some real promotions this week, so I was I was surprised. This is early. This is really early for promotions. Like like I said, usually they wait till the All Star break. And like last year with Mejia, they waited till the All Star break. And, and even though he was on a fifty game hitting streak and batting like almost four hundred, they still waited. But this year, I mean, some of the pitchers were doing so well, they're just like screw it, let's promote them. Uh, <laughs> so is so, that just the reason you think, or is it, is it literally just because they were so good and they don't really want to wait? They don't want to well, be patient. This part time of it, around. part of it was they were doing really well, and part of it was there's injuries. Um, like at AAA, uh, Mike Clevenger got promoted to the main roster because he's been killing it at AAA, and they've also had some of their basically filler guys at AAA um, have been getting hurt. So they just didn't have uh, another extra starter. So they promoted Michael Peoples. He's he's not like a top prospect, but he's just been kind of Mr. Consistent, a really good innings eater. Not going to overpower people, but he, he, he deserved a call up. I was I was happy to see him get get promoted. Uh, and then from high A, they promoted Thomas Pannone to double A. And holy cow, is he good? Oh, my goodness. And, and and it's not like Thomas Pannone was going to go out there and get an easy first start either. They they promoted him. He's he had current he was on a 45 inning scoreless inning streak dating back to last year. And he went out there and he faced the Trenton Thunder who is the number 1 team in the Eastern League. 
They had, I think, four or five of their top prospects in the lineup, including Glaber Torres. I think, other than Yoan Moncada, I think he's the number two prospect in the, the country, on M, uh, according to MLB Pipeline. And then he was also squaring off opposite the ace of the Eastern League, Chance Adams, who had been was 4-0 with like a 0.6 ERA in the Eastern League. And Pannone outdueled him. <laughs> when when five and... Yeah, five and two thirds innings, struck out six, no runs again. Just unbelievable. So, major props to Pannone. And then Shane Bieber, who we just interviewed uh, last week, he got promoted from single A, Lake County, all the way up to, to high A. And first start, I think he went six innings, six or seven strikeouts, one run. Amazing. So, good for good for Shane. And, and good for all these uh, young guys that are that are really stepping it up. Have we kept track of how players are doing after your interviews? Can we can we call it a Brian <laughs> bump? Is this happening? Because you interviewed Thomas Pannone last year. You yep. just interviewed Shane Bieber, and then he went off. What when's Matt Esparza going to go on a streak here for a little bit after his interview? You might. <laughs> I mean, right now, this is how crazy. Like, if there's a team that you want to watch for their pitching, it's got to be the Lynchburg Hillcats. I mean, right now they have. Five of the top ten in ERA in the Carolina League, as out of their starting rotation, and it was just last year, like the same thing. We were saying in high, there's so much pitching, but it's all just moved up, and now we mm-hmm. get to do it again. It's just there's so yeah. much depth in the system. Like, how many other systems can have so many injuries and then to say, "I oh, will just bump up a bunch of top prospects," yeah, <laughs> and it'll be fine. It's, it's working. Yeah. So but yeah, and don't forget, yeah, Kai Tom. Had a, a huge week. He got nominated for Player of the Week after I interviewed him. So yeah, I think I think as far as I'll do just fine. Yeah. How, how are you liking doing those interviews? By the way, you've been pumping them out, and they're great to read. I don't know if anybody, if you, if you haven't been reading them yet, everybody, I usually leave them. Um, they're pinned at the top for a while. Usually a couple of days afterwards, the whole group of all of them is left on the front page down a little further. So if you haven't, check them out. But but just in general, how you like doing them, Brian? I love doing them. I mean, I've got a long history of doing interviews. Like I used to, I've been interviewing cage fighters for you know, the last six or seven years. So, I mean, baseball players are easy. I mean, <laughs> a little less intense have, probably. Yeah, yeah. A lot less intense. So, um, I mean, as long as you do your research, I mean, these guys respect it. I mean, you, you ask some goofy off the wall questions. They're like, Whoa, you know, this guy, I, I even asked Matt Esparza a question that I didn't end up including in the interview, like about a song from a mix he made on his old MySpace page that I found. Oh, <laughs> like from that about the Wu- yeah, yeah, it was about the Wu Tang Clan, and he's like, "Yeah, I don't really listen to them anymore." <laughs> so, so I was like, "All right, fine." He seemed like he was embarrassed even to talk about it. So I'm sorry I'm bringing it up, Matt. But uh, so if yeah. he's he's what 22, yeah. So MySpace, he would have been like 12, right? Because I was in the well, early 2000s, I think. This this MySpace was, I think, from when he was in like Tennessee. Like when they re- relaunched MySpace, they oh, tried like so some people music. buy it out and they tried to yeah. make it about music and stuff. It didn't end up working out, but I think he got caught <laughs> up. He got caught up in the MySpace hype, I guess. <laughs> but it's still just so crazy. Like we can dig back to everything now for these young players. Like we're at that point yeah. where you can dig oh, it. And it's shocking. It, it's it, like a lot of yeah. interviewers don't. I mean, you're doing all the work for it, but a lot of them are just like, well, you pitched and you have stats. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it really oh, helps stats. if you know what their hometown's from and you can find like old articles from their high school days and stuff, so yeah, yeah. There's there's just there's just a lot of a lot of information out there. You just got to do the work. Like you read their Twitter feeds. <laughs> oh yeah, especially just sorting by old and going from the beginning. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> there's there's some there's some gems at the beginning. <laughs> so let's let's turn it back to a little we'll call it a somber note uh, with Greg Allen. He got hit on the wrist, mm-hmm. broke his hamate bone. He's going to be out six to eight weeks, or was it four? It was either four to six or six to eight. Um, but he's going to be out at least a month, yeah. four to six, right? Yeah. So a month it's, and a half or so. Well, I looked it up and it said six to eight, but the Indians have had two players actually recovering from ham eight bone injuries and surgery, and they were both out six weeks. <laughs> so they uh, pretty much got it down to a sign. I mean, it's different yeah, for Luke, everybody, but they've yeah. got it down to six weeks. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So uh, Luigi Rodriguez just got activated. Um, he was out for six weeks, and he's back in double A uh, Akron, and then I think Mitch Longo just got activated and uh, he was out with a handmade bone injury as well. So, and he's going to play Lake County. He was a draft pick, I think in like the fifth or sixth round, probably sixth or seventh round last year by the Indians in the 2016 draft. 
So, uh, yeah, those guys were, so the timetable is about six weeks. So thankfully it, as long as everything goes well, we'll, we'll have Greg Allen back in our lives sooner rather than later. And that's not, yeah. And that's not the only injury we've been having in the minor leagues. It's been a, it's been a bit of a tough week for, uh, some of our top prospects. Yeah. You want to run them down real quick? What we got the bigger ones? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, Tyler Naquin went out down last week uh, with a, a, a back injury and, Kind of like Corey Kluber, you just you never really know with the back, so um, timetable is uncertain with that one. Francisco Mejia just went on the DL today with a sore groin. I don't think it's anything real major, uh, or I, 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 actually, it's not sore groin. They just said groin, so I, I don't think it's anything major. But uh, we'll just have to, to wait and see on that one. Uh, obviously, Greg Allen, we just mentioned Gabriel Mejia, one of my favorite players. He's out with a wrist injury. He's on the seven-day DL. He hadn't really played this whole last week. I think they were trying to see if he could just take some rest days, but they decided to put him on the DL. And then uh, one of the top relief prospects in the Indian system, Leandro Linares, who is a zero ERA on the season, he is out with a sore forearm. He's also on the seven-day DL. So. That's the basic roundup. There's a couple other guys, but I mean, those are the major players. Yeah, I have to think with, with some systems, like if you have those quality prospects go down, there's a little bit of a panic. But like we said a few minutes ago, <laughs> Indians, they go bow down, they just bump up some players. It's no big deal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's that's what's been happening with uh, with like Akron. I mean, they just mm -hmm. lost Greg Allen and, and Mike Poppy, and they won today one to nothing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so they're still winning. Or, no, they didn't, they didn't lose Mike Poppy. They lost Greg Allen and, and Francisco Mejia, but... Guess, guess who stepped up? Mike Poppy. That's what I meant to say. <laughs> uh, he's going to get a Player of the Week nomination. His second Player of the Week nomination. Yeah. Mike Poppy is going to be getting it. I, I am. Sh I think people are getting going to be really surprised when they see what Mike Poppy is batting at this point in the year. Because he's the one who's now. always started slow, right? I always get him in. He's he's always been slow yeah. for the whole season. He's never batted over two thirty for a full oh, yeah, season. Right. And I mean, he's always, you know, just the Mike Poppy is basically. You go 0 for 3 that's or 0 right, for yeah. 4 with a, a walk and two strikeouts. I mean, that's that's the Mike Poppy. But um, he went 2 for 4 today. His batting average is now 302 on the season. He has the best batting average of any player on the Akron Rubber Ducks. So I don't know why that made me think of this, um, but it's something we haven't really talked about. I think since we started doing it this year, but uh, Bobby Bradley, he kind of had a weird start and he's, he's maybe got him better. I know we, we didn't plan for this beforehand, but mm -hmm. do you have any information on him? Like how he's doing or kind of what happened at the beginning of the year there? Well, I mean, just slow start. Like uh, a lot of people I've said a million times, the, the jump from high A to double A is the biggest in any level. So usually it takes a long time for the batters to adjust and he took an adjusting period. Um, but if you've been paying attention to how he's been hitting lately, he's been doing way, way better. I don't know if he'll get a Player of the Week nomination, but if you look, I mean, strikeouts are always the number one concern with Bobby Bradley. But if one, two, three, four, five, six, in his last seven games, he struck out twice. That's amazing. Yeah. And he's never uh, really been, for a power hitter, he doesn't have major strikeout troubles, does he? Or no, the thing uh, is that he I mean, walks enough times, like. He, he walks enough to, to compensate for it. I mean, he strikes out about close to 30% of the time. Um, but let's, let's see where he's at on the season right now. i I got to look this up super quick. <laughs> yeah, because I remember... Thank, thankfully, like, he had a golden sombrero here to say, Oh, yeah, he's, at, he's definitely had a golden sombrero this year, but it was like hey, it happens. Yeah, but um, that power's back. But, yeah. So on the season, he is striking out at 27%. But that also includes his super slow start. So I, I think if you factor in, let me see, if I take out the first two weeks, let's see where he's at. 23% now. So if I take out the first three weeks, it drops a bit. That's about so. where you wanted, I would think. Because he's, yeah, he's never going to be like a Michael Brantley, but he's 23. He's fine. Yeah. He'll be okay with that. And yeah, that's, that's just something you're going to accept. And so over the last three weeks, his ISO's 250, his on-base percentage is over 350. So, yeah, he's, he's, he's turning it around. Yep. It's slow going, but, I mean, what what are the, the, the WRC plus that people like? It's still over 100, even though his batting average is just over 200. Yeah. So he's, he's getting the job done. And 
Uh, slow and steady. I, I, I hope he can get the, the batting average up, but I think that'll that'll come with time. Like his uh, bat pip is horrendous right now, so I think regression in the positive way should should help him out for sure. Yep. So, Brian, any other thing you want to mention before we get to um, get right on our questions? Um, any other topics? Yeah, you lined up? there were a couple other players I just wanted to give a shout out to that had really good weeks. Um, Aaron Caval. He had a great start the other day. He'll be in my player of the week. He went seven innings and struck out seven. So he had a great start. And I think Matt Esparza might be getting it as well. Let me double check on Esparza in case I'm getting this wrong. He's getting that Brian bump, that Brian interview bump. Getting, well, this was before I talked to him. <laughs> but I did carry ask, over. It's forward yeah, I did ask to talk about talking to him. And his last start... Um, okay, no, it wasn't him. Somebody went seven innings. And I'm, I'm trying to remember who it was, but I don't remember, so I'll have to, to look into it. But somebody else just went seven innings as well and had a really good start. Now, for your player of the week, you're usually pretty firm and they have to have like either two starts or be Tristan McKenzie, right? Yeah, usually it is. But, I mean, this week the pitching was so good and the hitting was so-so. So I think the, the pitchers that just went once and had really good starts, they're going to get it for sure, so... Yeah. Any other noteworthy that's going to be on your list? Um, there's there's another pitcher that had that seven inning start that did really well, but I can't seem to think of him off the top of my head. So okay. I'll have to get back to you on that one. So we'll move on to questions now. Uh, while we answer the first couple, just keep in mind anybody in the chat now, anything you want to answer, drop it down there. We'll answer it live pretty much right away at this point because we're we're on to the question section. So anything you guys want to know, let us know. But our first one uh, does come from Facebook earlier comes from matt mcphee he wants to know well, we sort of just talked about this a little bit but um his recent injuries notwithstanding what do you feel greg allen needs to work on to keep taking steps toward the majors so i'm assuming he just basically means when greg allen gets back what does he have to do to eventually get to the majors he's already pretty close at double a obviously he's playing really well before the injury so when he comes back what does he have to do to continue on that the high trajectory that he's on yeah main thing with greg allen he does all the little things right he can play small ball he has um, he plays amazing defense. He's an incredible base runner. Let me double check on the season. He has nine stolen bases. He has not been caught yet. So he's doing a great job on the base paths. He's playing great defense. Um, he's getting on base at a pretty good clip, although I will say his walk rate is down this year. So he needs to be a little bit more patient maybe. He's only at 8.3% walk rate, and he's still at – a 15% strikeout rate, just like last year, but his walk rate's down about 2.5%. So maybe raise that. And the other thing is, I think he just he needs to make a little bit harder contact. Like right now, he's just putting the bat on the ball and running things out, but he is not hitting for much power or even getting doubles. And a guy that fast should be getting a lot of doubles. Like even if you just hit one in, in between outfielders, you can leg it out. So I would like to see him make a little bit harder contact. I don't need him to be cranking home runs, although he did actually do that pretty well in the, the AFL in the offseason. But um, I would I would like to see him hit for extra bases a little bit more, too, because I think that could be a big factor in raising his stock a little bit more. So our next one, uh, Mark Shuffleton, he wants to know, is Pannone from AA on the Major League Radar? He impressed me at the Rubber Ducks game I went to on Monday night. First of all, I'm jealous. you got to go see him pitch. <laughs> That's exciting. Mm -hmm. Pannone's amazing. But I think you, Brian, have a little story to tell that involves Pannone and Major League Radars and Minor League Questions and <laughs> Jim Calluses. <laughs> yeah. I, so this is a perfectly timely question because I literally sent in a question to uh, Jim Callis from MLB Pipeline about Thomas Pannone. I was, this, was, this was my question, and I want to give you his answer. I said, how much has Indians left-hander Thomas Pannone increased his stock this season? He wasn't even listed among the Indians' top 30 prospects this past February, but now he's put up 51 and a third consecutive innings without an earned run, dating back to last season. So that was from Brian H. in Fremont, Ohio. So that is me. But So Jim Callis had this to say. He said, uh, Thomas Pannone took off after making some delivery adjustments last year, though his dominance is hard to explain. Pannone works with a 90 to 92 mile an hour fastball and can throw strikes with a decent curveball and changeup. And while his stuff isn't overwhelming, hitters just don't seem to see his fastball. 
Because he lacks a plus pitch and thrives based on deception, Panone will have to prove himself at each level. He's handled every challenge so far, and while he's not a top-tier prospect, I suspect you'll see him in our Indians' top 30 when we update the list in July. So, um, just like uh, Jim said, if if Panone can continue to perform at this level, I, I'm not expecting him to like break Oral Hershiser's consecutive scoreless innings record or anything, but if he can just continue uh, being consistent, going out there, throwing a lot of strikes, getting a lot of strikeouts, keeping guys off the base paths, he's going to force people's hand. So uh, right now, like he entered the season not on a lot of people's radar. I mean, I thought he was good. He was he did have the lowest DRA, I believe, of any pitcher in the Indians system uh, that was a full season pitcher last year. So you would think that he would be on a little bit of people's radar and he's just kind of living up to it right now and, and he's on fire. So, I mean, he got promoted. So that definitely proves that he's on their radar. And if he can continue pitching the way he is, he is going to have his stock completely skyrocket. <laughs> so that, that's basically what I got to say about it right now. But he, he does, like Jim says, he's he's got to prove himself a little bit more. He had one great start at double A. He's going to have to have a few more. Yeah, I do agree with um, what he said. Is he's not like an overwhelmingly amazing prospect. Even with this big streak, it's just kind of he's a he's a pretty good prospect who's had a great series of games in a row. And I do want to see where Stock. I mean, Francisco Mejia. He was on. I mean, it's a different situation because he's a catcher, but mm-hmm. he was on nobody's radar. And then he did that long streak, and he's still been great this season. And all of a sudden, he's a twenty-one overall prospect on Baseball America. So yep. I don't think Panone will do that because he just doesn't have the the great pitches, but. He, he's going to go somewhere, and I wouldn't mind seeing him like in the back of the rotation at some point, way down the road still. But mm-hmm. it's really and, and Panone, yeah, and Panone is impressing people. Like mm-hmm. somebody, a scout from Fangraphs, went to watch him pitch, and they upgraded their rating on his fastball after watching him play. So you know he's doing something right that that he's going out there and people are upgrading his stuff, and so it's not just deception. There, I mean, his stuff is getting better too, for sure. So. Our last um, question, I just had it and I lost it. Who asked it? There we go. So, at Stan Fanger on Twitter, he wants to know who will be the first of the aces to pitch in Cleveland. I'm assuming he obviously means the great top flight pitches that you have. Tristan McKenzie's the, I guess we can still call Brady Aiken that. Um, I'd say Clevenger's out of that conversation now because he's in the rotation. So, so out of the great, all the great um, pitches the Indians have in their system, who's going to get there first and have a real impact on the team? Well, I, I, I laid out kind of a, a plan for Tristan McKenzie, and it involves him potentially making it all the way to the Indians pitching staff by the time he's 20 years old. Insane. So, yeah, I know it, I know it's insane, but he's that freaking good. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say it was wrong. I just said it was yeah. insane. Because <laughs> uh, right now he's 19, and I, like I said earlier, I think he'll get promoted after the All-Star break to Double A. And last year, what happened was they promoted him in midseason to Lake County, and then they just had him start the next year at the next level. And if he goes out there and continues missing bats and continues dominating at double A, then they're probably going to have to start him at triple A to start next year. And at that point, if he's pitching well and they're having some issues at the back end of the pen, if some people are struggling, if there's injuries, He's going to be a name that people are going to want to see on that big league roster at some point. So I think uh, I think Tristan McKenzie. I'm not joking. There's a chance he could be on in in a major league setting near you next year. <laughs> yeah, I don't think that's crazy. I mean, it's crazy, but I don't think it's crazy yeah. wrong at all. The CC Sabathia route. Yeah, yeah, that he would be older than CC Rex. I think he was 19. Yeah, yeah. So he's not going to. That just tells you how crazy CC's ascension was but Mm -hmm. mckenzie is just that good and i can't wait to see him like it's one thing to see him on the blurry screen of a minor league broadcast being all skinny and pitching but just imagine him like standing next to major league or like see him not yandy diaz (laughs) just out there (laughs) for the pledge of allegiance and (laughs) the the anthem and all that so he's gonna it's gonna be really fun to see him on a major league field um just his his body shape he's so lanky and I can't wait to watch him pitch. Yeah, there's a lot to love about him. And th- and there's so much more potential that he's yeah. not even close to tapping into yet. That's the thing people need to know. 165 pounds at 6'5". I mean, 
I could run a, a mile under five minutes in high school and I never was weighing <laughs> and I was six foot four and I wasn't even close to 165. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The biggest thing is going to be his fastball, I think, because it's yeah. still not even like a killer fastball. It was like in the mid nineties, yeah. maybe low nineties. Yeah, like it, it only hits the mid nineties when he really rears back for it. Yeah. So um I mean he, he I think it could hit upper nineties by the time he fills out for sure. I mean he just needs a little bit more meat on his bones. That's ridiculous. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what kind of stuff he has with that velocity. So Brian, um another fun week of prospect chats. Um next week we'll have more and more games to watch. Anything exciting prospect wise you're looking forward to coming up this week in particular, other than Tristan McKenzie's start, because I think that's a default mm-hmm. we can put in <laughs> until he either yeah. makes it to the majors or a lot of things go really wrong. Yeah, so Tristan McKenzie. To? Yeah, Tristan McKenzie start. I'm really excited that basically all the double A games are televised, so we can see Thomas Pannone start now. And then um, I want to give people uh, an eye out for keep an eye out for some interviews in the works. I have a Logan Ice interview. I'm, I'm planning on speaking to him soon. Last year's Indian second round pick or compensatory pick uh, catcher. And then uh, I put in a request for Greg Allen. They said that they would help me with it, but that was before he got hurt and I haven't heard back from him about it. So uh, I, I sent him another message yesterday like saying, hey, is Greg still available? If not, I understand because he's hurt. Um, and I said, if he can't talk to me. I want to talk to, to Dylan Baker, the Indians' uh, 40-man roster that just came off of uh, the disabled list finally from two years, and he's been lights out out of the Akron bullpen. So I wanted to talk to him as well. So those are the, some of the interviews I got least planned. And then uh, I might try to speak to Tristan McKenzie. I think I've I talked to Kai I, Tom. I talked to Matt Esparza and, you know, kind of working my way up. And <laughs> Tristan I think McKenzie I'll, with the Brian bump. That's going to be something crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going I'm to try to talk to Kyle West from the, the, the Lynchburg PR team and see if he can hook me up with Tristan. So we'll see. We'll see. That I think that'll be the next one I ask for. And I hope, <laughs> hope he's available. <laughs> well, great. Looking forward to all those. Uh, thank you, everyone, listening now. Uh, whether you're live or listening on a podcast anywhere. Please give us a review and like and all that good stuff. And we will talk to you next week. Brian, see you then. All right. See you guys.